Take it for me. It's called Daisy. 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 Give me your answer, do. I'm half crazy. All for the love. So this is a story that I became aware of last week, but I didn't know that they were claiming that this Simon AI robot was already on the ISS. Apparently it went up on July 2nd on the last uh, supply shipment on the Falcon 9 rocket. But yeah, it's kind of weird because they're putting out news stories on it now. They've been talking about this for months, and yet when you look up Simon, spelled with a C, or, or any information on... I've been trying to find footage of them actually interacting with Simon on the ISS, and so far all you can find is these few little clips that are kind of this, the same package of clips that all the different news stories have, where it doesn't even really look like... It honestly looks like they just pasted it in there, because none of them are even looking at it. But most of the footage that you do find is from the testing phase, and they, they even show them taking it on the zero-g plane, you know, the European Space Agency zero g plane so this is this is interesting because it supposedly is developed between a partnership with the german base agency and ibm so this is basically the ibm watson ai software that they just renamed simon with the c and but yeah so far i've not been able to see an actual interview or where, where it's speaking and interacting with with the astronauts yet it's it's supposedly been up there for like a week but nothing nothing that i can find yet maybe you guys can find something But yeah, I'd be pretty remiss if I didn't say something about this because it just kind of combines so many of the topics that I'm typically dealing with here and the artificial intelligence narrative and that whole agenda combining with the the space travel narrative. And of course, everything just keeps bleeding into everything, right? So, you know, you combine all the propaganda and it just becomes more propaganda. Constantly combining their their propaganda outlets to, to push the the meta narrative, right? And it is kind of weird that they're they're only just now doing this when they probably could have done this years ago. I mean, people already have Siri and you know these Google Talk devices in their homes, and people are already willingly bugging their own homes and talking to software with names. 
So obviously it's it's just reinforcing all that and presumably trying to take that whole narrative even further. But yeah, you, I can't help, I <laughs> couldn't help it. I just had to do the uh, the Hell 9000 clip there. The, the iconic clip, singing Daisy. The iconic clip from the iconic, the most iconic space movie ever made. And, I, and it's weird because, you know, that's something that I wondered about for a long time with like 2001, A Space Odyssey being this massive occult, you know, symbolism piece. And then trying to understand, like, what, what's the whole deal with Hal? And even before I knew it was had anything occult symbolism, you know, when I was uh, younger and watched that as, like, a teenager growing up, you know, it was, it was fascinating. And the Hal thing is, is what most people remember from the movie. And yet, when you try and kind of connect it to the, the stuff at the beginning with the monolith and then what happens at the end when he goes into the monolith and has this big transcendent interstellar experience, you know, the stuff in the middle where Hal eventually tries to, to kill, kill all the humans... It was like, it just it just seems so disjointed. Like, what does that have to do with this, the whole, with the whole movie as a whole? Like, what does <laughs> almost getting killed by an AI robot have to do with transcending space and time and having some mystical union with the universe and all of that? So it's obviously, you know, it's obviously in there for a reason. And what's so? What's the point? And now here, I mean, this little Simon thing floating around is probably the closest thing we've seen in quote unquote real life. You know, or the stage production that is mainstream media. And, you know, you got a little AI with a, with a face floating around and he's going to talk to astronauts. So that should be fun to, to see in the coming months and pick apart all that footage. You know, apparently this, this new ISS commander, he's German, Alexander Gerst, is going to be the, the main guy who's sort of in charge of uh, working with this Simon AI bot. But, you know, we'll see how much it interacts with all the uh, different actronauts. But yeah, it's pretty clear that they just pasted this in for a few little clips so that they could promo it. Uh, but they haven't, apparently they haven't filmed any other interviews with him so far, so... That would be pretty hilarious if they decided to do something really science fiction-y with it and have it watch that be like the first place that artificial intelligence supposedly achieves general intelligence on the ISS. I mean, that would just be like so fitting, combining all your fictional pseudoscientific nonsense into, <laughs> into one thing. But uh, anyway, speaking of AI and propaganda and all that, you know, for those of you out there who think that maybe this is still a topic that is a little bit overblown and having doubts about there being such a thing as uh, true artificial intelligence, that's, I should probably add the caveat that I'm not saying that I believe that there will be true software-based artificial intelligence at some point. The hypothesis that I've more or less been holding to for several years now is that AI is essentially a digital puppet for very real spiritual entities that are going to try and manifest themselves into our technocratic uh, one world government uh, system. I mean, it's, it's the perfect, it's kind of the perfect cover, right? You know, and I've been talking about the whole connection between artificial intelligence and aliens, you know, recent videos, and, it, and it's cool because so many of you guys see those connections too. I mean, you guys really get it. It's not just me making these these wild uh, speculations and stretches. But in that vein, I just wanted to play this clip that I found a few weeks ago. I've kind of been waiting for the right time to play this. Bear in mind, this is from a channel that has millions of subscribers. This is a huge channel. And this guy's talking about the singularity and artificial intelligence. And I'm just going to cut to the end where it gets to the really, you know, because you don't need an overview of what AI means. But it's this part at the end that just kind of says it all. One thing that all AI researchers agree strongly upon is that when the singularity happens, one of two extremes will happen. The human race will either become extinct or become immortal. When creating AI, we are essentially creating a god. And we can't know if it will be a kind god or an evil god until it's too late. This is because the AI will be so many magnitudes smarter than us, so our puny minds can't even begin to imagine what a being of such supreme intelligence would be interested in. What would its desires, hopes, ideologies and morals be? If this omniscient AI turns out to be a merciful god, then the future will be an incredibly exciting time. When the singularity hits, what if we discover that our new sentient overlord is merciful and kind? Then boy are we in for a wild and exciting future. 
Once the AI reaches levels of intelligence many thousands or even millions of times that of the human race, there are essentially three roles that it could take within our world. It could act as an oracle, doing no more than answering any question we ask it, such as how do we solve world hunger? How can we build a time travel machine? What is the answer to life, the universe and everything? So it would essentially be deep thought. The second role it could undertake would be more like a super intelligent servant, a genie if you like, where it would actually enact what we asked of it. A super intelligent being would very likely know how to modify, dissemble and reassemble atoms and even particles and build anything it likes. So we could ask it to build us a time machine and it would, using some advanced atomic level construction technique that us humans couldn't even begin to comprehend. The final role it could take on is a ruler, overlord or sovereign, basically a god. When the singularity happens, there will be an intelligence explosion because of the recursive self-improving that the AI will be capable of. It will shoot past human level intelligence like a rocket within days, possibly even hours. It will have solved world hunger, cured all diseases and hereditary conditions, reinvented human transportation, possibly even introducing us to teleportation, and figured out the most stable and fair political and economic systems to run our world on. But all of this is only the beginning. When I say that we will have created a god, I am not exaggerating. The AI will effortlessly be able to create and destroy life and shape the very earth itself. Think about it. For a few years now, scientists have been able to manipulate and move individual atoms in the lab. Now, if it's possible for us dumb humans to move atoms, then it goes without saying that a super intelligent being could effortlessly rearrange billions of atoms all at once, meaning that nothing in the universe will be safe from its touch. The AI god could move mountains and part the seas Moses style, Anything and everything could be transmuted into something else. Garbage could be transformed into bags of rice or even chunks of meat. We would no longer need to farm animals because atomically identical meat and other foods could be created out of anything. And this of course leads to immortality. If the AI can rearrange atoms, then it could, theoretically, create an anti-aging box that an 80 year old could walk into and come out of the other side 20 years old again. The AI could even create super intelligent nanobots that would permanently live inside all of us and would constantly repair damaged cells, so we would no longer age. After all, the body is like a car. If we can repair it from the inside, it will keep going forever. The human body is just a lot more complex than a car engine, but it would be child's play to a super AI. But what if we get knocked down by a bus? No problem. We could of course ask the AI in advance to back up our brains. And then a new body, even a new identical brain, could easily be created and the backup be restored to that body, if the worst were to happen to us. We truly would become immortal. Of course, we would eventually come to the realization that our bodies and limited brains are holding us back. We would eventually abandon our physical bodies and upload ourselves into a new digital realm where we too would become an AI, just as intelligent as the AI God that we created. And once we have all become sentient, space travel would be a breeze since we would all be software. We could simply beam ourselves on a laser beam to other planets and other galaxies. All I have talked about seems like science fiction, possibly scenarios that could unfold thousands of years in the future. But the terrifying reality is that we are on the very cusp of all this happening within the next 50 to 100 years or even sooner. The majority of the world's greatest scientists agree with that. So the next 20 to 50 years are going to be either terrifying or very exciting indeed. But one thing is for sure, we are about to create our very last and the most significant invention in our entire 2.5 million year lifetime as the human race.